Hey, Senior Drama, this is Miss Hall, of course. Um, welcome to our new adventure with um, e-learning. So I'm going to be posting some videos that are like this, um, some slideshows without my voice, you're welcome. Um, also some articles, some videos um, that we are going to be exploring all together. Um, it's gonna be a little bit obviously different from being in class, but hopefully um, we can still do a lot of this work together uh, and maybe get a feel for being in the room together as well. Um, so I'm sure that a lot of you have a lot of questions for how we are actually going to be putting on our one acts together. So um, this lesson or this slideshow um, is going to give us all a bunch of suggestions for how we're going to be moving um, through this despite us not being in the same space together. Um, and also a little task for you to do to actually get started with some of that work. So we are going to be looking at digital theater, of course, because we are not actually going to be physically there. Now, digital theater actually is a type of theater form, um, and most of the time this actually involves a live performance element. Now, we are probably going to be straying away from having this completely live. However, um, I think it could be kind of interesting trying to use some live video or some live feeds as well as some that are pre-recorded um, to get, still get give some of that um, energy still with this project. So it does not only work as a way to communicate using these different forms of technology, um, but it actually di digital tech, digital theater, sorry, um, really is used throughout the piece to um, add special effects, to change actual time uh, periods, space, share emotions in a different way. Being able to actually get a close up on a character, especially during a monologue is, is usually incredibly compelling. Um, some ways that I've seen digital theater be used actually in a theater um, is through webcam work, where yes, you are seeing uh, the person on stage from far away, but you're also um, seeing a close up of their face so you're able to actually see their expression see their emotion um, in a much more intimate way um, and it allows the the audience to actually interact with these characters that might be um, a little bit different um, when you're actually on stage so unlike film because I know you're probably thinking okay well what's going to be the difference then if we're just you know filming and putting it up is usually, again, digital theater um, happens live. There's still um, some spontaneity that is there. So that's what we're going to try to still um, to still get through, even if that is um, trying to accomplish this in, in one take. So maybe um, recording on our own computers, um, you know, and, and then posting it in one take. That could be kind of interesting. So it might um, be an aspect of a larger, um, more standard theater piece like, it I was, like I was talking about before, or it's completely digital where the piece is being streamed online using uh, maybe Zoom or using Google Meet um, or Skype just to give you some examples, okay? Um, so some more forms of immersive digital theater um, that are out there sometimes use phone calls or text messages to actually, again, get the audience involved in the narrative, in the story. Um, so one that I was a part of a few years ago, um, we actually received um, telephone calls um, and we would actually be uh, asked to come to a specific space, to a specific um, theater or non-theater space. And um, all of the people who were there as audience members um, would be seeing one part of this story, part of this narrative. And the interesting part about it, um, of course, I'm not going to ask you to leave your homes or go outside at all, but the interesting up Part, uh, part of it um, was that we were all getting maybe messages at different times. So we we're seeing a different part of that story. Um, so it was really immersive and got us, the audience, completely involved in the storytelling. Um, many are also using uh, Panorama or uh, uh, VR um, to actually immerse the audience in these theater pieces using technology. OK, um, so one article and I've linked this right here. Um, I would like you to go and take a look. Um, and this came out a few days ago. Um, and this is focused on a few different theater companies that are in Toronto um, that are still trying, that are still uh, trying to get their theater out there. Um, so, of course, they are using different forms of technology, um, streaming services to actually still put on their show. So I encourage you to go give that a look. Uh, the link is there. I'll also put, link it in our Google classroom so it's a little bit easier maybe for you to access. 
So this is one piece of theater that is um, that is being created um, and it uses virtual reality. So again, this is not something that we're going to be accessing at home, uh, but again, something that might be similar, something that you could use to again, allow the audience to still be a part of the space would be Panorama, that might be um, a good suggestion. Obviously, we're not going to be using virtual reality, um, but to still have the audience part or be a part of that space with you. So I'm going to show you a part of this. So this is from um, National Theatre. Um, and I'll, again, I'll also be posting all the links. Take a look at my spice rack. Each a color and flavor of England. Over time, I've mixed them together. And no king or queen could have said it much better. Today, we've been filming for the new VR experience all kinds of limbo that we're doing at the National Theatre. And we've been filming each section of the song in this big green room where there's about 106 cameras, which is absolutely crazy. All kinds of limbo is a collaboration with Accenture that comes from a provocation of the show Small Island. It's a communal VR experience where the audience steps into the performance space with Nubia Brandon, the principal performer, and the orchestra who've made the music. So I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, but again, I'm going to have the link that's there and I would love you to go and check that out on your own time. Um, but really what I want you to take away from this video is looking at how they're actually able to immerse to get the audience involved in this production, despite them not actually being in the same room. So again, this is not me asking you to be using um, virtual reality, um, but this is instead uh, playing with the idea of how we can be using different forms of technology to still share that story, to change um, um, time to change space and get the audience maybe involved in a different way than we can when we have live theater. Okay, um, some of these next videos, I'll play some and, and some I will skip over a little bit, but again, checking them out on your own time. All of these have something similar in common all of these next four videos. So the first one, um, I play with the phrase each other. Now these are all films, some are short films, um, from our, some are actually full length um, movies. Um, and they all have something similar in common. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, the second one is actually from a film. These are some trailers that are here. So Snow, Steam, Iron. Um, I will play you this next one. You might have seen this in theaters, I did. Um, so again, they all have something similar in common. Your life slips away from you, you know? Changing your phone number and your email becomes normal. Taking out a restraining order, normal. Relocating to another city, normal. But you still see your stalker everywhere? Rationally, I know this is my imagination, but I'm alone in a strange city and I never feel safe. There's some more forms you need to fill out. It's just routine. I finished my homework. Sawyer Valentini, please follow me. Well, look, I, I don't have a lot of time. I, I should be back at work, so. What am I doing in here? Take off your clothes down and to your own. I will pause that to so check that out on your own. Maybe that hooked you already. Uh, some of you might have seen that movie already. Um, and this I'm next sure. one, again, something in common. I'll only play about a minute. Imaginez un monde sans couleur. Imaginez. Place ça, c'est un place sans joie. Place ça, elle était capable de triste, très vide. La vie difficile, j'en ai. La vie, c'est un défi, et puis qui dit. Sans couleur, elle était capable impossible. Ça, 
So all of these videos, these four videos, um, are actually all filmed with iPhones. All of them. So all those four videos are filmed with iPhones. So this is maybe just showing you um, that despite the the lack of technology that you might have at home, so only having um, a cell phone or only having maybe a webcam to actually film, um, it still can be incredibly compelling using the devices that we have um, to actually portray stories virtually. OK, this next one that I'm going to show you. So, again, today was really about showing us some different resources that are out there, some that are a little bit older, some that are actually really recent, like this one um, from March 27th, just showing how different art forms can be still produced, still shown using maybe our limits of technology right now. And of course, us not actually being able to work together in the same space. So I'm not going to show you this one. It's relatively long. Um, it's about a, a, an hour and a half, not expecting you to be watching the whole thing. I'll give you a little rundown. So this is from, uh, this is a piece called Performance of Snapshots and it's by um, Convergence Theater. This came out March 27, 2020. So of course, March 2020, uh, 27, 2020, um, the quarantine was already in effect. So of course, a lot of theater companies like this one had to still put on their shows despite not actually being able to be in the same space. So this is their work um, and their attempt to actually try and get the story across using the devices that they have. So you're going to see um, interesting ways that they actually show um, dialogue between characters. You're going to see really interesting ways um, and compelling ways, actually, that they are actually uh, able to show monologues and get um, those close up shots that we're not actually always able to see when we're on stage. Um, so it's it's quite interesting the way that they are actually able to still produce a story and still show as if they are communicating in the same space, but using, using technology. But of course, um, I want to also um, try to get our minds away from thinking that we are going to be able to exactly replicate what you are planning to do on stage because it is... Um, not possible, unfortunately. So instead, I think it's going to be uh, good for all of us um, to see what kinds of ways um, we can adapt and shift um, some of what we're trying to portray on stage um, and how we can still make it compelling using the technology that we have um, at home. So another way, um, so this is aside from using video, so aside from using different streaming sub, uh, sites, um, using cell phones, using video on our iPhones or Androids to actually film ourselves, we can of course look at radio drama as well, or playing with a little bit of both, using just audio, using just our voices and sound effects, as well as video, um, combining the two to also make it um, an interesting storyline. This might help us um, get through some of those more difficult scenes um, that are going to be quite hard to portray when we are, of course, by ourselves. So I know that a lot of you have been doing, did radio drama um, last year or the years before with myself or with Miss Terry. So doing it at home, um, there's a lot of resources online, um, including Audacity. Some of you might be very fam familiar with Audacity, um, and it's a great site. It's totally free, easy to download, um, and it's a way for you to manipulate, to edit um, your voice, as well as all of the other beautiful sounds that you're going to be including um, in your radio drama. So, of course, we're pretty familiar with radio, what radio drama is, but it's a, it's completely um, auditory performances, so stories that are done um, just using our voices and just using um, sound effects and music. Um, so, of course, it depends entirely on dialogue, so interesting dialogue. I know some of your scenes were actually um, had a lot of heavy and intense dialogue, so this would be perfect for radio drama, um, music, and sound effects um, to help a listener imagine um, the actual storyline. So, of course, some elements of radio drama that um, you know quite well, I'm sure, um, is looking at the role. Um, so the actual characters themselves. So how are they actually being portrayed? Um, how are you using dialogue, using sound effects, um, actually changing the sound of our voice, going to make them distinct? Because again, we're not seeing uh, these characters. We can only use um, our ears to listen to them. Um, time and place. So how are you actually going to create time and place? So using sound effects, um, 
using music that's maybe from a specific time period, um, how we are actually changing our voices. So the actual diction or dialogue, um, of course, we know that words and language changes throughout the years. Um, so maybe what slang are you going to throw in there if it's from um, something in the past? Um, action. And um, this kind of goes with one that's coming further on. Uh, but of course, the actual plot, how are you going to make it succinct enough so that we uh, the audience uh, can clearly understand what is going on um, and how we are showing those different elements of the plot. Again, using uh, sound effects, music, and dialogue. Uh, tension, how are you creating tension? Um, using radio drama, of course, radio drama um, goes hand in hand with the mystery uh, and thriller genre. Um, so again, with that, there's usually a lot of um, really beautiful sound effects that help um, uh, create tension with the audience, create suspense with the audience. And finally, focus. So this goes really well um, with action and uh, role or character. So how do we make the action and the roles focus specific enough so that the audience really understand it's really clear um, because again, we cannot see the action, we cannot see the characters that are on stage. So that is another option for you uh, to use. So, of course, those are not the only options, but the ones that I am suggesting. Um, so your task for this week is to write a proposal for how you will be producing and sharing your one act play with the class. So you're going to be communicating this week with your group member. So I uh, recommend um, email or even Google Meet. That's a really great way. You don't have to use the video option, uh, but using it just for the instant message or just for, for your voices to have a little chat um, where you can interact more immediately rather than, rather than just using email. Um, and during your meeting, if you let me know ahead of time when you're having a meeting, I can have you know my phone, computer close to me. Uh, feel free to email me during your meeting for any suggestions and I will try. I uh, my best to respond ASAP so um, it can be part of your meeting. Um, I would suggest one, having one person take notes during the meeting. Um, and then you are going to be filling out, just have one person do it, um, or you can split it up amongst yourself. But you'll be filling out and submitting the digital one act proposal organizer. Um, feel free to submit more than one proposal um, if you are considering maybe two completely different ideas um, and my feedback might help you when you are continuing that work. So you're going to be submitting this proposal by Sunday, April 12th in order to gain feedback and continue with the creative process uh, for the following Tuesday.